Get your Sims a computer and make sure you hide it from every guest that visits. Because we know what Sims are like, they will find it and they will use it. Anyway, we're going to talk about programming and all the fun snazzy things that you can do with it, starting with the basic level unlocks before we get into some of the cooler, lesser known things. Before your sims get to work smashing that keyboard programming, it can be worth giving your lot the fast internet trait, which will increase the rate in which you train the programming skill. Likewise, the ideal mood for programming is being focused. And if you're in this mood, it will also boost the rate in which you train up the skill as well. In case you were wondering, Buying a tea brewer and drinking pitch black tea is a very easy way to make your sim focused. Kicking off with level unlocks, at level 2 of the programming skill you can make plugins, which takes around an hour to make and will be sold for a small amount of simoleons, think around 50ish. At level 3 you can mod games, choosing which game you want to mod. Once you've modded a game, then you'll be able to play the modded version of the game you make. Not going to lie, from my testing, I don't believe there's all that much of a difference between normal and modded games. I'm guessing though that modded games are more fun. At level 4, you can make viruses, which is perfect for more criminally minded sims, and this will take just under 4 game hours and net you a few hundred simoleons. Also, if a teenager has level 4 programming, they'll also be able to hack school grades. This has a chance to succeed or fail, but from testing, my sims seemed to succeed much more often than they failed. A success meant that a sim would move up a grade, such as from C to B, while failing moves them down a grade, such as from C to D. There's also a 24 hour cooldown on this interaction, but it's super useful in getting your sims to be that star student. At level 5 you can take on side jobs, which will take around 6 hours and net you a few hundred simoleons. At level 6 you can hack work performance, which takes just a few hours on the computer. Now similar to a teen hacking their school grades, this can succeed or fail, and if this fails your work performance will take a hit. There's also a cooldown on this interaction. Just anecdotally, I found this to be very hit or miss, and I wouldn't even say you succeed most of the time, so it's questionable whether this will really help you. I highly recommend setting yourself up to make hacking as successful as possible before attempting this, which I'll talk about a little later. At level 7 you can make mobile phone apps, which takes just under 24 hours, so yes, say goodbye to your sims life. This provides a decent lump sum of a few thousand simoleons, and will also provide you with ongoing royalties of a few hundred simoleons a day. If you have the Get Famous expansion pack, then your sim will also gain a little bit of fame from this. At level 8 your sim will become better at hacking, and from my testing, this means that they'll perform hacks faster, cutting down on the usual time taken by 25%. At level 9, sims can make computer games, and this takes a little over 24 hours, think around 30. Like making apps, it will provide a lump sum of a few thousand simoleons and ongoing daily royalties, but making games will provide more money than apps. If you have the Get Famous expansion pack then you'll get a fame boost too. Now at level 10 you'll gain the ability to hack both the crumple bottom servers and the supercomputer, and in fact all sorts of hackable systems will unlock as you level up the programming skill. For example at level 2 you can hack the Llamacorn, level 3 the Lothario Trust Fund, level 5 the Land Grab Systems, and at level 7 and 9 the National Sim Security Agency and the Plum Book respectively. Hacking takes a couple of hours, and the hacks requiring a high programming level will generally generally make a little bit more money than those requiring lower levels. The supercomputer at level 10 in particular is interesting, as it can only be hacked every 7 days, and if you fail, it can even break your own computer. It can be a fun little challenge, but the payout isn't huge, so go for it if the idea of hacking your supercomputer is for some reason speaking to you. Now before you get hacking, there's a few things you should know. Firstly, if your computer breaks while you're in the middle of a hack, you'll lose any progress you made, so it can be worth investing in an unbreakable computer such as the Ghost Rider Disappearing Desktop 
or upgrading your computer with the ECC RAM upgrade to make it break less often. If you have level 9 handiness, then definitely consider the IP spoofer upgrade for your computer too. From my testing, this will make hacking a tiny bit faster, but more importantly, it'll also increase the amount of money you make from hacking by a bit too. Next is that it can be worth going into the Oracle branch of the criminal career. If you do this, then when you reach level 7 in the career, you'll unlock the ability to hack the mainframe on a computer. If successful, you'll upload an uplink to the mainframe, which is a fancy way of saying you'll gain an 8 hour plus 1 focus moodlet, and while this moodlet is active, you'll gain extra money from using your computer to hack. In a similar vein, if you enter the freelance programmer branch of the freelance career, then when you max the performance bar once in this career, you'll unlock the ability to overclock computers. Doing this will make it so that all programming tasks will be completed a little bit faster while using a computer. In addition, your sim will gain a very powerful focused moodlet when using an overclocked computer, making it perfect for a programmer. It's also worth mentioning that the freelance programming career can be a lot of fun and does spice up the skill a bit, allowing you to take on various programming tasks. This being said, every task you take on is action from a computer, so it's similar in that respect. In this career, you could need to study security systems, perform more hacks, create website or product landing pages, and much, much more. Also, keep an eye out for the redacted gig which requires level 7 programming. It's quick to complete and pays extremely well. Before finishing up, I wanted to quickly talk about the Computer Wiz Aspiration, which ties in very closely with programming. To complete this, you'll need at least level 7 programming in order to create an app. You'll also need to reach at least level 5 in the Tech Guru career and spend at least 100 in-game hours on a computer. If you're going for this, but you also want the Hack the Mainframe career ability, then I would complete this aspiration first in the Tech Guru career before switching over to the Criminal career. Completing the aspiration will give your sim the Webmaster reward trade. You're likely thinking, sounds weird, what does it do? Firstly, in the socialize section, it unlocks the ability to internet stalk, which allows your sim to learn all of the traits of a known sim without even meeting them. Next, in the web section, you can earn money turking. Yes, turking, not twerking, somewhat sadly. This interaction takes around two and a half in-game hours, and while being performed, your sim will gain 75 simoleons at regular intervals. On average, I made around 300 to 375 simoleons per session. Finally, if you head into the web section and then click on research, you'll see that you have the ability to undertake a research binge. This will start training up all your skills that you're at least level 1 in, in what I would say are very random and sporadic intervals. It's hard to keep track of what's being raised at any given time, but you'll definitely notice lots and lots of level gains. And with that, we've reached the end. That's a complete guide to programming in The Sims 4. If you enjoyed or found this helpful, then please subscribe and leave a like. I would really appreciate it and have an amazing day. See you later.